Hey folks, Levi here once again. I hope everyone had a good New Year, and um, like I said, I, I didn't make that Happy New Year video, so I hope 2017 will be a great year. Um, and I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. So anyway, um, so I'm going to start off this year, 2017. Like I said, I'm going to be bringing Indiana Jones last year's say because I couldn't, because the video got muted. So anyway, I'm going to continue my Disney reviews. This, however, you know, like I said, I was going to review the Jungle Book, the 1994 version, and the 2016 film. Well, now I'm going to review the, this review is for the 1994 film. And I'm going to continue reading my uh, Disney animated Pixar films as well. But this time I'm reviewing the Jungle Book, this, this film I grew up with, the 1994 version with uh, Jason Scott Lee. Excuse me. Hopefully I can show you guys it. Yes, this version I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, it's perfectly there. Okay, y'all can see it now, yes. But this is the Jungle Book I'm talking about. I grew up watching this movie. I don't have it on... I, th I, don't, I don't think the movie's on DVD or... um, or v It's on VHS still, but... You can probably find it at a Google if you like this movie, but it's only on VHS. It's not on DVD or Blu-ray, and... I think it deserves to be definitely on Blu-ray, because I think it's a... I think nowadays it's kind of just underrated. Well, you know, I can't really say underrated. People are still on YouTube. I watched the full movie on YouTube, and I still enjoy it. I still love it, you know. And it's probably my favorite version of the Jungle Book, you know, my out of the movies that I made about Jungle Book. I love the 60s show, and I love the remake, but my favorite version of uh, the, the Jungle Book is the 1994 version, you know. Because it's really not really a kid-friendly movie. It's more... Have an action adventure movie kind of type, you know. There's no singing in it either, you know. And there is live action, so maybe I'll put live action Disney reviews, you know. Since this is a Disney movie, but Disney also has a lot of live action movies, which I want to review some more down the line. I'll have to check if I ever did review any live action Disney movies. But anyway, this movie I think just gets overlooked nowadays. I was reading on the internet about it and it said that it's basically just has an age well, which I disagree with. I think it's aged like a fine wine, you know, this movie. I think people just, you know, the reason I say it's a little underrated is because people don't talk about it no more. You know, people seem to forget about it, which is a shame. I do think it deserves to be on DVD or Blu-ray. It definitely deserves that. You know, the movie, you know, did well. Pretty much made a budget back. You know, it, did, it pretty much was successful. Got critics loved it, and uh, you know, you had great actors in it, great acting. It's a bit of a two-hour movie, but it's not that long. It goes by really good and fast. You know, you never get bored by it. Yeah. Anyway, I'll go ahead and talk about how it got made and stuff. I'm not going to play any music. I'm going to be careful doing that. Just with the whole thing with YouTube and the copyright, I don't want to get a copyright strike or a claim again. kind of just tired of that, so I'm not going to play any music. But the film also does have a good soundtrack. So the photography for the movie took place in India, as well as parts of the southern United States, Southern California, Fall Creek State Park, and Tennessee. The score was composed by Basil Bordelius, Basil Bordelius, sorry, sadly he passed away, may he rest in peace, he was a great composer. So also says he directed some movies. I think Bill Bedoris also did the music for, uh, let me see. I know he did the music for uh, Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer. He did music for the film Red Dawn. He made music for Robocop, awesome movie. Uh, the original. He did music for Free Willy, Robocop 3, blah. On Deadly Ground with Steven Seagal. 
and this film in Under Siege 2, Free Willy 2. Um, he did the music for Starship Troopers. Carter Dar Dundee in Los Angeles. Yeah. So he's made he's made some great music. But yeah, Belvedere is basically known for Robocop. And I'm sure Conan the Barbarian. He did score for those scores for those films. And here he does a great job with the score again. You know, he really does a fantastic job with the score. Uh, the movie pretty much is directed by Steven Summers, who I uh, Steven Summers, who directed the Mummy series, the Scorpion King. Well, no, not the Scorpion. I don't think he directed it, but he he wrote it. You know. Uh, Van Hessling, he directed. He directed the G.I. Joe films, I believe. No, I just think. No, I guess he just directed the G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra. Sorry. But he directed some of those movies. He directed G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra, the Mummy series, the score. Yeah. He kind of helped make the, the Mummy series, so. And basically, what they did is when he was asked to direct the movie, he got the chance to do it. Uh, the movie is based off, you know, written by the book of Rudyard Kipling, who I was, they, I watched the making, also, the making of this movie, they have it on YouTube, that Kipling was, you know, born back in the older days, probably the 1800s, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but I know he wrote, he rose up in the, he, when he was raised, you know, he, um, heard about the jungle and the animals, and was fascinated by that, and that gave him the idea to write the story of the jungle book, and, they, I think he grew up in India, I'm not sure, but, but they pretty much shot the film in India. It was well done. You know, there are real animals in this film. It's not, you know, CGI or anything. The film is practical all the way. It looks great. The film looks fantastic. They didn't shoot a real jungle. They had to, you know. They, they didn't, it's not really a sound stage or India. You're saying what you're seeing in this movie is really India. And what you're seeing is really a jungle, you know. Yeah. It's not a set, you know. And there's some sets in the movie, but they do a fantastic job. And they make it look real. And practical, you know, still looks it holds up today, I think. Um, uh, some CGI in here and there, like on Kai, probably looks outdated, I would say. Yeah, but you have the animals in here, of course. Of course, you know, you got Baloo the bear, Big Ear the panther, Shere Khan the tiger, King Louie the orangutan. And I did mention Shere Khan, right? And your gray brother, and the whole wolf pack. You know, you got the animals in here. And, yeah. You know. So, the movie for the cast. Uh, let me see. The movie got a good reception for the critics. For his action and visuals. And it says, shoot to the series. Roger Ebert did give the film three out of four, three out of three stars out of four. He said it didn't fit the target audience. Some scenes I could read aren't simple for children, but hey, I was a kid, I was alright with it, you know. The film does have a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes. So the film is well, was well liked by critics when it came out, I just think people forgot about it. Which is a shame. And the film stars Jason Scott Lee. He plays Mowgli. Jason Scott Lee. Um, I'm sure he's been in other movies. I know he was in uh, the only two I can think of, uh, which I've never seen, which I would like to, is he did um, Dragon, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, and uh, and Time Cop 2. So I would like to see those probably. Sean Nagel plays five-year-old Mowgli, who's the young, younger Mowgli. Lena Headey plays Catherine Kitty Bryden. I know she was in the sequel to 300. She was in a lot of other movies as well. She plays the main love interest. And Joan Wolf plays the five-year-old Kitty. Carrie Owens plays Captain William Bone, the main villain. I only remember him from uh, Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. Yeah, that's the only movie I think you know I have him in. I'm not any sure about any others right now. But Sam Neill, Sam Neill plays Colonel Jeffrey Bryden, who is the colonel of the British Army. Kitty's father. Uh, Sam Neill, if you know Jurassic Park, 
Well, this is wherever you did Jurassic Park and did Jurassic Park 3 too. John Blaze plays Dr. Julius Plumford. Um, Dr. I mean, yeah, Dr. Julius Plumford. John Glaze, you know, was in the James Bond movies as well. The World's Not Enough and Down of the Day. We only did two Bond movies. Jason Fimmels plays Lieutenant, Lieutenant John Wilkins. Um, pretty much like Bones' friend and right hand man, basically. Ron Dunchy plays Sergeant Harley, you know, who's a brutal soldier, you know, turned bad guy. Stephen Culp, Culp plays Bulldo. He's one of the main villains of the movie. Emma Akri plays Tabaka. Tabaka, basically, um, Bones' enforcer. Friend, Fred Taylor plays Nathan Mowgli's father. Train animals. Casey plays Casey as Baloo, a male black bear. Shadow as Bagheera, as a male black leopard. Shannon plays Gray Brother. These are the animals we're talking about. Little Will plays King Louie. Boom Baby plays Shere Khan. Kai is described by both a computer generated and a grunt and a condo. Other trained animals were monkeys, elephants, camel, horses, zebu, and wolves. The sounds used for the monkeys were actually those of chimps and sayings. Yep. And the film was written by Stephen Summers. It's produced by Edward C. Filman. The screenplay is by Stephen Summers, Roland Yuvner. Stories by Roland Yuvner, Mark Gilman. And it's based on the journal book. And the second journal book by Kit Rudyard Kibling. The music is by Basil Herrick Bordoris. The cinematography by Julian Russ Acne. It's edited by Bob Discasey. It's distributed by Paramount Pictures Visit, 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 Visit Pictures. And the production company for this movie is Walt Disney Pictures. And it was released December 25th, 1994. So, don't worry, this movie is not... Probably like 22 years old right now. Well, the budget to make the movie was 30 million dollars. It's 111 minutes long. The budget to make this movie was 30 million dollars. The box office made 43.2 million dollars. So it seems like it did okay at the box office. I think it did pretty well for its time, you know, because back in those days you didn't really need to make a million. The movie didn't need to make a billion dollars to be successful. It could still make some good, mo decent money and like 43 million, and it could still, you know, be successful back in the back in that time. I don't know nowadays people say oh it's a flop. It seems like it's alright, you know, for his time. I, th I think he did make his budget back, so. I mean, hey, if you're a fan of this movie, please let me know if it's on DVD. Because I'd really like to get it. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, I'll go and talk about the plot of the movie and my thoughts. Maybe read some quotes from it. Okay, so the movie starts off with, every, you know, with uh, Colonel Bryden, you know, starts off in 1886, I believe that's the year, where the British Raja is in the jungle, they're in India, they're in the jungle part, and, you know, you have young Mowgli and young Kitty who are five years old, their mother's died, so they pretty much have a special bond going on, you know, um... Mowgli watches his father give a flower to a woman and then kiss her. And uh, as they're in the jungle, and deeper into the jungle, uh, Mowgli's father is like guiding them in the jungle. So pretty much, he's guiding Colonel Biden, Biden, Sam Neill, and then the <laughs> and then you hear Sheriff Khan roar, and they're all freaked out by it, and they're like, "Let's shoot this tiger!" No, he said. Shere Khan is returned. Shere Khan's, his father's saying he's mad. Shere Khan's mad because we're in his, we're killing his animals. But was like, that's not a big deal. I'm like, well, how would you? And then Mowgli's father says, well, how would you like it if someone went to your kit, your house and stole your stuff? You know. <laughs> so Shere Khan's kind of mad at them because they're shooting down in his animals. Shere Khan, you know, is the second antagonist of the movie, but he's also Lord of the Jungle and protector of the jungle. So. If man come, if man comes with gun to, sh to kill those animals, he'll pretty much come after. He'll pretty much go after your, after, go get revenge on you. So he pretty much does. They go for a camp for the night. Mowgli watches Kitty kind of dance and tries to give her a flower. And tries to kiss her. Doesn't work. He's kind of like upset by it. And then she gives 
she gives she she gives him her bracelet. Uh, Shere Khan shows up, sneaks up on one of the guards and kills the guard. So one guard's looking at it like, well, Mowgli's father's teaching him about animals, teaching him how to speak English. He's like, what is this? That's Baloo. Bear. Bagheera. Panther. Me. You are Shere Khan? <laughs> yes, the man in my dream told me if I face Shere Khan and show no fear, then I'll be tiger like him. And father's like, hmm. But anyway, when Shere Khan sneaks up and kills one of the guards, one, you know, one of the other main guards, British army soldiers, are, it's like he looks at a car of Shere Khan, the tiger, and turns around, Shere Khan attacks him and kills him. Shere Khan tries to attack Boldell. Uh, Sam Neill, Colonel Bryden, is, you know, he's got his wife, going to shoot Shere Khan. Um, Shere Khan is pretty much, you know, chasing Boldell. Uh, but his father, his mother's father's come to his rescue. He's like, Bulldo, shoot him, but Bulldo is a, Bulldo is a coward, so he just runs away. So he kind of, you know, fighting with Shere Khan a bit. Shere Khan is hissing at him and stuff, you know, roaring at him. Shere Khan pretty much does attack his father. Mowgli ends up on a wagon and, you know, gets, you know, the horse is freaking out. He gets away on the wagon. Colonel Barton can't do anything. He's about to shoot Shere Khan from attacking Mowgli's father, but he has no... The gun's on safety or the gun's not working, so he can't do nothing. Tiger attacks his father. They think Mowgli died too because it blows up, but Mowgli jumps off of it and he ends up on the tree. His father dies though that night, so uh, Mowgli kind of ends up running into the wolf pack, you know, and they pretty much raise him. So he gets raised by wolves. He gets raised by all the animals in the jungle. I like it though when he first meets Baloo. Baloo's a you know, bear cub. His head is stuck in a tree or something. And Mowgli has to pull him out. <laughs> and then... Uh, 20 years later. Okay, yeah. Then 20 years later, Mowgli's fully grown. The am blue. Gray brother. Gray brother is fully grown. Um... You know, Mowgli, who's a young man now, Jason's got Lee now. <laughs> Pretty much is sleeping one day in, on a tree, in a tree. And then one of this monkey, you know, steals, his, steals the verse that that kitty gave him. So he goes chasing after the monkey. And then he finds out that King Louie has it. King Louie's like bugging him about it. And so he goes chases him. And he ends up discovering all the gold and all the treasure he has in Monkey City. And he's like telling him, he's like, ooh, ooh. He's trying to tell him to, you know, ooh, give him the verse of that, you know, King Louis is a red like this. And then he pretty much, but, um, Kai shows up. Mowgli has a bit of fight with, Shikon, with Kai, I mean. Who, you know, Kai doesn't do anything in here, he's just a killer snake. He pretty much, uh, in here, Kai is the guard, you know, like the guardian of you know, keeps guard of, uh, sh uh, of, of King Louis' treasure, so anyone who trespasses, who, excuse me, trust trespasses gets eaten by Kai, so, you know, or animal, well, basically human, but, so, anyway, like I was saying, they have, there's a nice, nice fight scene there, Mowgli, I forgot to mention, when he's looking at the treasure, he finds his knife, kind of, you know, slit, you know, kind of touches it and gets cut, but he grabs the knife when he's in the middle of a fight with Kai and stabs Kai. Doesn't kill Kai, but pretty much stops Kai from attacking him. And then, you know, King Louie's mad, sort of a little bit upset, and then he throws him the bracelet back and goes like this. So the only things are kind of cheer for him, even. You know, King Louie comes around. Um, then the next thing we see Kitty, who's a grown woman now, uh, with Dr. Pomford, um, um, What's his name? John Glees. He's teaching him about the jungle. Don't cross that jungle. It's dangerous if you do. And one of the girls dares her to do it. So she, you know, she says, I will. <laughs> so she does run across the jungle. She uh, does come across Mowgli. And Mowgli, you know, again, gives her a flower that she drops. You know, gives it to her. He's about to kiss her. And she just runs away. She runs into Baloo. Mowgli shows up. He's like, again, Mowgli doesn't talk. You know, so doesn't learn English or any type of other language. Doesn't talk yet, you know, because he's raised by animals. So he doesn't know what's up. So him and Mowgli, you know, 
It's like he's kind of playing with the blue here. You know, they're play fighting. Uh, even though he, you know, blue steps on his foot by accident, uh, he's trying to, you know, he realizes Kitty trying to get her attention. But Kitty runs away and runs into Captain Bone, Wayne Bone of the film, who's the villain of the movie. Excuse me, main villain. And he kind of flirts with her. He's about to kind of like. Ooh, I feel like I'm gonna hunt you, and he kind of growls at her just to play around. And then Mowgli sees that, thinks he's attacking her, so Mowgli comes into a rescue. He's like, he's like, what is a savage doing? He's like, all right, savage, I'm gonna teach you a lesson. He tries to fight Mowgli, tries to punch him. Mowgli does this, and then Mowgli grabs his fist and then kicks him in the water. All the Wilkins and these other two men show up and they try to attack Mowgli. You know, uh. Wilkins is like, don't, just, just don't stand there, go get him. And they do, it doesn't work. He throws them the butts into the water. And he's like, well, I forget when Bone gets up. He's like, you're a dead one, you are. Mo, uh, Wilkins is about to go ahead and, you know, shoot Mowgli. He's like, he's like, he's like Wilkins, Bone says, Wilkins, shoot him, shoot him. He's like, instead, you know, Bagheera roars and it scares him off. Mowgli kind of gets injured but runs away. And he, you know, has this flower that Kitty had that he got, and he seemed to send, you know, sitting down with his animals, watching his sunset, and Mowgli decides pretty much to go give her the flower himself, so he goes into the Indian city, into India, into the city. Yeah, but that afternoon, anyway, it was a golden dagger. Yeah. Well, again, when, when Kitty, you know, they knew each other when they showed him, but when she first sees him, they don't, she don't recognize him. Mowgli is able to sneak into the city. He's able to get these, makes this, roar, you know, roar to these elephants. And again, he keeps the dagger as a trophy, you know. When he gets to the King Louis. But anyway, he sneaks into the city, runs into, accidentally runs into Wilkins. Wilkins is like, Savage is here. And uh, he's like, just don't stand there, go get him. And Mowgli was able to, you know, escape, go into, you know, up to climb up the spot into Kitty's room. She's like, please go away, please don't hurt me. And she's like, he's like, I will take the flower if you leave, okay? She takes the flower, he's about to kiss, like, what is it with you and flowers and kissing? And he's like, she's like, whoops, you hurt yourself? And she thinks that maybe he'll harm her, but she realizes he's harmless and he's not going to hurt her. And she's like, wait, Mowgli? Is that you? She recognizes him. And Mowgli kind of recognizes her, but then say nothing, he didn't speak. Um, but anyway, Bone and his men show up. Mowgli runs out of there. You know, he's kind of as a chase. They ch kind of chase him down. Uh, Mowgli is up this rope when this guy's playing this tune or whatever. He stops playing the tune when, get, when this guy does stop. <laughs> Mowgli almost escapes, but Bodo knocks him out with his rifle, you know, and takes the dagger. He's like, oh, where's he get this from? So they're thinking they know it's the lost land of the treasure, which is M M Monkey City. And then they go try to find out where Mowgli got the dagger at, so they kind of take him to the jail, and Sergeant Harley tries to beat it out of him. Sergeant Harley kind of tortures him, and, uh, you yeah, know, and beats him a little bit. Um, uh, Kitty tells her father that that's Mowgli, that we should, uh, help him, you know, get back to society, be a man, you know, to help him, as I do, he's like, okay. So she goes to get Mowgli, and... Mowgli her whole hand, she's like, he's like, Kitty, because he recognizes her. Bone's about to say something, but Bogan stops and is like, if, if, if he lets her talk, maybe he can tell us where the monkey city is, you know. You know, where the treasure all is. Uh, then they're, during the movie, they're teaching, this is where they're teaching Mowgli how to speak. I like it when Mowgli looks at a picture of a mirror. He's like, Mowgli, look, and Mowgli pushes the mirror, and it hits Dr. Plumford, it hits him right in the face. Mowgli can't really take a bath, he kind of freaks out there. They're teaching him on top, this guy's measuring him, it's tickling Mowgli, so Mowgli pushes him just to be funny. Um, Mowgli is learning, you know, engine, pass, he's learning A, B, C. He's learning how to speak man, they're teaching him how to be a man, teaching him how these are people, this is that, this is this, you know. Teach him how to be a man, you know, teach him how to say things. You know, you is beautiful, you are beautiful. You know, that kind of thing. Trying to teach him how to use words, trying to teach him how to speak, you know. Trying to teach him how to, you know, 
be like a man, you know, teach him how to be human, you know. Again, you know. He does learn it very well. Um, you know, Sergeant Harley, <laughs> I forgot to mention though, when Mowgli kicks him in the in his sweets, he's like, Oh, my sweets! But he does try to be Mowgli a little bit, but yeah. Anyway, like I said, Mowgli, I know I'm off traffic here. Traffic here, tra I'm off track here. Well, pretty much, Bone does show up, and Mowgli's, he's like, Mowgli, my, she's like, Mowgli, Catherine, Kitty's like, mind your man's like, oh, Catherine, and, you know, he's kind of putting his leg like this, Mowgli copies him, and then Bone does this, Mowgli's copying him again, he's like, he's a young fellow, isn't he? And he asks, you know, Kitty to marry him, Kitty, you know, uh, Bone takes him to, you know, show him around the area of India. And he says, where's the treasure in Monkey City? Where'd you get this at? It's like, Monkey City. Is there a village treasure there? Mountains of treasure. Mountains? And then Mowgli enters the room of where all these, where they, he killed all these animals and he sees all the heads and he's like, he's like, I want, he said, will you take me to the jungle? You know, will you take me to Monkey City? He's like, no, because you don't keep the jungle law. There's also a man's law, but you don't go by jungle's law. Man's law is killing, but you kill for sport and, f and fun. And greed. And he's like, that's just man's way. He's like, he's like, well, the more I learn about being a man, the more I want to be an animal. He's like, I hunt animals, you know. And Mo's like, maybe someday you'll hunt me. Uh, and then the next scene, they have the end you of know, the dance, the ball going on, and people are looking at Mowgli in a funny way. He teases these girls by catching this fly. And they, they were like, eh. And Mowgli just kind of laughs about it. And, you know, the, he didn't eat the fly. He just, and he lets it go. <laughs> uh, him and Kitty have a dance. And Bone sees that and is very jealous, you know, because he can tell that Kitty and her, Kitty and, you know, Mowgli, you know, like each other. He doesn't like that at all. And then her father, Sam Neil, announces their engagement. Mowgli kind of gets upset over that. And he, he asks Dr. What's, what's that mean? mean? That means they're bitty wet. That means she belongs to him. Mowgli says, excuse me, doctor. And then some of his men taunt Mowgli. They they push him on the table. A little mean to him. Everyone laughs at Mowgli. Mowgli runs out of there. He's like, Mowgli, wait. You're a man. He's like, I'm not a man. And I am not an animal. You run. I run with the wolf pack. You run with the, the man pack. That's the, that is the proper thing. And then he sees Bone coming. He's like, I should, I should not shame your house no more. And then he runs back into the jungle. And then he tell, and then Bone comes up and tells Kitty, you know, Catherine, you're going to marry me. So I'm not going to marry you. She gives him his ring back. He's like, you will marry me. And you will, I'm going to leave you to some desperate, savage jungle boy. And then she slaps him. And Kitty decides to, pretty much already on a mission, her father wants to go back, her, her wants her to go back to England. She kind of decides to stay because of Mowgli, but when Mowgli leaves and she doesn't want to marry Bone, she decides to just leave for uh, England, and you know that's when Bone and who was also teamed up with um, the Enforcer Tobacco, you know, and you know one of the British soldiers, traitors, uh, who was Boldo, who told him about Monkey City. I forgot to mention the one scene where they talk about it, where they come up with a plan to ambush them and. You know, pretty much capture Kitty, you know, pretty much take her, you know, but they didn't count on, you know, pretty much Sam Neil, Colonel Bryden to go along. Anyway, they get ambushed, a lot of their men get killed, and some, and then some of the, you know, the British, you know, traitors or whatever, whatever you call them, you know, get killed off as well. They try to capture Mowgli and then have Mowgli to push the buck away, you know. Both, uh, Sergeant Harley tries to, you know, hit him with his rifle, hit Mowgli with his rifle. Pew, and then Mowgli kicks him in the, kicks him in the balls. He's like, oh, my sweets! Both of those about to shoot him. But Blue shows up, knocks him down. And Bone and Wilkins, um, 
I mean, shoot Baloo, Baloo does not die. <laughs> and then Mowgli comes out and like, Baloo! And he was kind of crying over that and tries to go find the doctor. You know, running and crying when he does in the movie. Um, Mo then they ambush them again. Uh, I mean, they don't ambush them. I'm sorry, they that, that was when they were trying to capture Mowgli, sorry. But anyway, they ambush Mowgli. They ambush, you know, Connor Bright and Kitty and kill some of them off. Colonel Barton's able to shoot some of them in himself, he, but he gets shot. He didn't die, he just gets, you know, an injury. Doctor almost gets killed by Bulldo, who was about to stab him. Uh, Molly comes up and pushes him out of the way. Fights with some of the other men, he, he bites one. Bites him in the arm when they try to attack him. He's like, why do they do this? They know I'll come for her. They know I'll come for her. And he's like, D Doctor's like, Molly, you saved my life. No, Doctor. I need your help to save another life. Uh, then they pretty much Bones like, whoa, you're here. What is he doing here? When he sees uh, Bryden. Bryden's like, you can't do this. I'm your commanding officer. You must do what I say. And I want you to stop doing this. And the Bulldog knocks him out. And they have Kitty. And they say, why are you doing this? He's like, I can answer that. And Mowgli shows up. And he's like, if you don't come down here and help us. And they threaten her life. You know, Top Bone has a knife at her throat. Threatening to kill her pretty much if Mowgli didn't help him. So Mowgli, of course, does help him. They tie him up. Well, it's just in, you know, rope. Tie his hands, you know. And then they're walking down and Mowgli, you know, Bagheera staring at Bone and Wilkins and uh, was like, why is he staring at me like that? And Mowgli says, because to him, you are food. And then Bagheera's like, <laughs> Mowgli's like, huh? Uh, the next, you know, then there's the night they're eating and he's like, so is, this, is it far away? He's like, I'll pass the mountains. If you live long enough, I will tell you more. Mo, uh, the the animals are making noises in the jungle, and uh, Wilkins is kind of you know annoyed by that. Keeps on freaking out about it. Calm yourself, Wilkins. And Mowgli is like, can you tell me to shut up? And a, a man speaking to the jungle. Uh, How does that sound? But Mowgli finally does. And we get the noise. He he howls and is able to calm the jungle down. And then Shere Khan pretty much shows up. He hears roar. And they're like, oh, I like the bones like, I like the bagman tiger. He's like, no, sir. This tiger is the devil. And he's like, he tells Kitty, I need to protect you. I'm going to get out of here and protect you from Shere Khan. Uh, Mowgli's able to figure it helps Mowgli escape. Senator Harley wakes up from him. He's like, wake up, he's escaped, he's escaped. Tries to chase Mowgli, but he falls in the quicksand and he's freaking out. Wilkins tries to help him. He's like, Wilkins, grab my hand. Wilkins, grab my hand. Wilkins tries to, but his hand is so slippery. Wilkins is falling back. Again, in quicksand, what I heard about quicksand is you have to stay calm because the more you sink. But though, Sergeant Harley, half his body is like this up to the quicksand and he's freaking out. And when Wilkins lets go, he's like, damn you, Wilkins. And then he goes in there and he dies. Um, of course, Bone doesn't really give a damn, you know. He's just like this continuing one. He doesn't care about Bryden. And then he just loads up his gun. Let's go. Um, Mowgli finds uh, finds Bryden. Sam Neil. Sam Neil hears Shurkan's roar, so he thinks Shurkan might be after him. Mowgli shows up, and Mowgli tells him, that, you know, going to go back to the village. He's like, we'll help, you know. He's like, Mowgli, you you seem to be a very good friend. They kind of smile at each other. Because I, I don't think Brian really liked Mowgli at first, but he does respect him after that, you know, after helping him. And he says, bring her back to me. And he's like, and Mowgli get, does, you know, will. And Mowgli's like, ta-ta, to get the you know, elephant moving with other elephants. Colonel Brian does the same thing, ta-ta, and then the, <laughs> it's funny when that was like, oh, God, bloody elephant. And then Mowgli is, you know, just eating some food, eating some fruit, you know, kind of along their path and is hearing Wilkins complain, oh, I hate the bloody jungle. They said the almost on the middle of bloody jungle. Um, then pretty much, the, you know, Mowgli ends up on this, you know, walking on this cliff and seeing where they're headed. Uh, but Tabak is nowhere to be fine. He, Mowgli kind of hears a noise because see what that is. He looks down a little more then looks behind him and then Tabaka punches him in the face and Mowgli gets up and punches him in the face and they both, you know, kind of having a scuffle. He tries to throw up the Mowgli up a clip and he punches Mowgli in the shoulder really hard. 
you know, they were not Molly Dome because the movie was really no match because The Rock is, you know, a huge guy, so it's hard for you to fight him. And he grabs a boulder, which is a big rock, and is about to crush Mowgli. And then Mowgli like, kicks him, kicks him in his legs, and he, Tobacco goes on at the edge of the cliff and says, uh, uh, and dies. And Kitty comes to Joe says, well, that's a shame. Let's move on. And Bo is like, kill him. So Wilkins and Boulder are like, only two left. You know, try to shoot Mowgli. But Mowgli jumps in the river and is safe. Um, and then later up, they end up in Monkey City. Um, well, they get there finally. The Shere Khan roars and like, what? Are they? And then the monkeys are kind of you know screaming too. Is like, Bo is like, what are they doing? Is like. And then Bulldoze, for you know, cow- cowardly, coward as he is, runs like, they're running from Shere Khan! <laughs> and they all get separated. Wilkins kind of tries to, sh- pow, pow, you know, shoot at Con- Shere Khan a little bit. He's kind of trying to unload his gun. Kind of freaked out. Bulldoze are running, thinks Shere Khan's nearly got him. You know, Wilkins is freaked out too, and then he sh- he, he hears uh, Shere Khan's roar and it scares him. So, <laughs> He ends up shooting Bulldog on the leg. He's like, Damn you, Wilkins! I'm gonna be killing you! It is funny. Wilkins is like, oh, I'm sorry, Bulldog. <laughs> He's about to laugh too a little bit. <laughs> and then he kind of just slowly turns around, you know, slowly walks back and turns around. And then he's confronted over Shere Khan. He's like, <laughs> And he tries to run away. Shere Khan chases him. And he eventually does get him. He's trying to get Shere Khan off him, but Shere Khan, you know, he's telling the camera, the camera's like, you know, doing circles where you see Shere Khan eating him. You don't see, you just hear Shere Khan, you just, you just hear Wilkins yell. And Bones is like, Wilkins! Wilkins! He's like, you could, and he looks like Kitty, like, you could die too, you know. He won't let me die, she's meaning Mowgli. Um. Anyway. Kitty and. Um, Bone end up in this room, and it's dark, so he's able to, you know, there's a little gasoline in there, so like, he's able to put some, you know, light a match and light up a fire, which, you know, really, it's got all these good pictures and stuff, which really looks cool. Mowgli's behind them, you know, following. Bodo shows up trying to shoot him. Bodo can't run anything because, again, he got shot in the leg by Vulcan, so he's kind of having a hard time walking. He's about to shoot Mowgli, he enter, enter this tomb, which is actually a booby trap. And he's like, I know that you're a human man cub. I'm going to kill you. And he's like, he tries to shoot him. He shoots this hole though, when it pretty much is all the sand out. All the sand, all the holes are falling out. And it's all the sand coming out. He nearly tries to, he almost gets a chance to kill Mowgli, kill Mowgli but one of the holes falls out and the sand hits him. He's like, ah! freaked out. And then he realizes the tomb is... The hole is, the tomb is coming down and it'll crush him. He tries to get out of there. The tomb is really, he's trying to, ah! and then he dies. And Boldo and Mo, uh, yeah. I forgot to mention when Mowgli kind of confronts Kitty and, um, uh, Kitty and, uh, Bo, and he's like, follow King Louie. He will take you to your treasure. And then, you know, he shoots at him. But anyway, Boldo, after Boldo dies, Mowgli kind of runs in the bones is about to shoot and kill him, but Kitty stops him, and then they kind of get knocked out, and then Bones wakes up and realizes it's the treasure. <laughs> He's happy to get it, and then Mowgli shows up, so he decides to have a, a fight with Mowgli. You know, they kind of, you know, have a final fight. You know, Mowgli is able to get the sword. Mowgli tries to fight his sword too with him, but he, he doesn't really know match for him, so Mowgli has to just, you know, kind of move around and not get hit by the sword. Not get killed, you know. He's throwing things at Bone. He throws something at his arm. Um, and then he's like, Oh dear! <laughs> he's about to, he's like, and he's like, He's like, What do you, th-? and then, uh, you know, it's a pretty much like a knife, a sword fight that's going on, but Bones has to move and use some other objects to, you know, fight him. Uh, and he's like, and Bones is like, What do you think, what do you think you have that I don't, huh? And then he tries to kill him more. He's like, Strength of a bear. Speed of a panther. Heart of a wolf. And then he kind of stabs him with a dagger. Or cuts him. It's not that it's like. And very sharp teeth. And he decides to leave. And he gets. Kitty gets up. She's like. Well, let's take you. He's like. No. This place only brings death. Tries to get her out of there. 
Bar's like, Kitty, we can share, Catherine, we can share this all money, it's all this whole, we can have it for ourselves. Fine, go leave with the jungle boy. I don't need you. I have everything I need here. And that's pretty much this is where, you know, they, where King Louis summons Kai, and Kai shows up, and he's just happy, and then Bones like, has a sword on his face up. He's eating all the, all the monkeys are just, look at him, Bones is like, wondering why they're doing that. Turns around, Kai shows up behind him, <laughs> freaks out, and he, he falls in the waters. But he's got this, he's got the bag of gold in him, and it's pretty much dragging more under the water. And he's trying to take it off as quickly as he can. But he can't, and he sees all the other victims that Kai's killed, so he sees a bunch of dead bodies down there in the water. He's like, oh! And then pretty much Kai shows up and eats him, kills him pretty much. And then Mowgli and, you know, Kira are out of there. But Shere Khan shows up, Mowgli confronts him. And he's, and, you know, they kind of look at each other. And Chikon tries to scare Mowgli by roaring, and Mowgli ah! roars back. And he's like, Chikon, and Mowgli's like, What is it? Chikon sees me not as a man, but as a creature of the jungle. So therefore, Sh therefore, Chikon respects Mowgli as a creature of the jungle, you know, has respect for him, showing that he's not afraid of Chikon. And Khan respects that and, le and allows him to leave peacefully. And then they go back, and Baloo is okay. The doctor, John Lee, is able to make him better. He's a very good patient. And then they go, at the end, to share a kiss. She gives Mowgli the flower this time, and they share a kiss. And then, you know, I forgot Sam Neill narrates the movie. He's like, he's like, and so that is how Mowgli, protector of, creature, of creatures great and small, became Lord of the Jungle. So listen well, and long life to those who keep the jungle low. And then that's the, you know, with them kissing and, you know, being a couple, and now Mowgli is Lord of the Jungle, and then that's the end of the movie. With them and Kitty sharing a kiss in the narration by Sam Neill. And that is The Jungle Boy 1994, y'all. Yeah. Um, like I said, I... I really do enjoy this movie. I really thought it was good. Maybe some of the CGI about Kyle looks pretty monkey, and I think Shere Khan should have been in the film more. I know that he's the second antagonist, which, you know what? Screw that. I, I can't believe I'm complaining about that because Shere Khan was the main text of the original film, but I like that this film was different from the original. You know, it might have frightened kids a bit. You kids could be frightened of Shere Khan, or, you know, people who die in this movie. There were some horrifying deaths, like. You know, Sergeant Holly dying by quicksand, I thought that was terrifying as a kid, or Shirk Holly killing Wilkins, that's pretty terrifying. I've heard people say about Wilkins, you know, oh, well, he, he was a good guy, he didn't, so Wilkins does come out as a good guy, but I think he pretty much hates Mowgli. Anytime he confronts Mowgli, it just seems like he wants to kill him, you know, he, and he has grief for the treasure, so, you know, I don't think, and he's friends with Bone, too, I don't think he betrayed Bones, you know, some people, I'm just reading YouTube comments, people saying he's innocent, I don't think he's innocent, no, he's, no, he wasn't, he went along with Bone, you know, he, whatever Bones wanted, he would go along with, and he himself was greedy, and Bones is a greedy villain, a guy that cares only about money, that loves money, and, you know, at the end, pretty much, his love of treasure gets him killed, you know, his greed gets him, you know, he, he dies because of it, and all of them are greedy and stuff. You know, so, and they all get what they deserve. And both of them by the, you know, that could be terrifying for kids. So it's really, I don't think kids really should be watching this movie. I mean, it might frighten them a little bit, some scenes, because there is killing. Shakan might frighten them, you know. But in the end, it's a, you know, it's a good movie, you know, you know, about respecting the jungle law, you know, about, you know, respecting the animals and, you know, not you know, letting Grey take over. Just a good movie, you know. There's got to be a theme to every movie out there. There's definitely a theme to this one. There's also a video game based on the movie, but, you know. Oh yeah, Robert Ebert, Roger Ebert, Robert Ebert, Roger Ebert calling him, calling it an Indiana Jones movie. This movie is not an Indiana Jones type movie. Some people might think it might be, but Mowgli is not Indiana Jones. 
you know, he's raised, you know, he's raised by the wolves, raised in the jungle, so he's not an adventurer. He just what happens is that his home gets, you know, taken over by these villains and they're threatening Kitty, you know, love of his life, you know, and they're threatening his home, so he has to stop them, you know, and save Kitty, which he does, you know. Just the movie, you know, is, I think mainly about, you know, either being a man or animal no matter what, you know, you, that really doesn't matter, you know. And that's kind of the point of the movie. You're just keeping the jungle alone, you know. Yeah. And the movie, you know, again, so the CGI in the movie, maybe in some, in some scenes it looks outdated, but that's all I can say about this my only issue with the movie. Especially on Kai. It does look practical, but just close ups when he pops up at you. Could be a little CGI right there. Okay, I want to hear some quotes from the movie now. Forty six minutes. The jungle speaks to me because I have learned to listen. I think a man lucky who could count you as a friend. I think a man lucky who could count you as a friend. They want me to come for him. They know I'll come for him. Men, women, one man, two women. Lucky man. <laughs> the more I learn when I'm is a man, the more I want to be an animal. You can die too, you know. He won't let me die. So you've returned to see your fate, have you? He's vicious and uncivilized. They won't make him civil. They won't make him civilized. I hunt animals, you know. Maybe someday you hunt me. I am not a man, and I am not an animal. Why do you suppose he steers us like that? Because to him, you are food. It's not done. It's just not done. Well, it's not done. I haven't done anything. People are beginning to talk. People always talk because her father, Sam Neill, gets mad for spending time with Mowgli in the jungle. People always talk. I just want what's best for you. Well, I think well, you want what's best for you. I run with the wolf pack. You must run with the man pack. It is the proper thing. I will shame your house no more. This is a personal favorite of mine. You thrust it into your opponent's belly like that. See? And then you twist it in a little rip out of his stomach. And then do you, and then do you read him? No, of course not. Does he want to eat you? Why? Why? No. Then why kill him? Because he's your enemy. What is enemy? Someone you hate. What is hate? And Bone doesn't really answer him. Doesn't answer him. What are you looking at? I've seen that before. That's King Louis of France. King Louis, if you see him, tell him that I know who took his hat. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, King Louis has a hat. Yeah. Life is a spinning wheel. It has, a sp it has been said, with each spoke, a tale to be told. So keep silence upon the banks, and I tell you one of the tale these tales. The story is it's chanting of the jungle itself. It's about pride, power, and treasure. It's about fangs and claws and talons. But mostly, it is about love. My new command was at the edge of the world, surrounded by a million miles of the jungle. With, with me was my daughter Catherine, whom everyone called Kitty. Leaving us was an Indian guide, whose son was called Mowgli. From the moment that we were born, Mowgli and Kitty, they were born Mowgli and Kitty had a common bond. For both of their mothers had left this world by bringing them into it. Also with us, my good friend Dr. Julian Plumford, who has to be our surgeon. This is near the end. This is the end of the movie. So that is now. So that is how it came to pass that Mowgli, keeper of the jungle wall, pretends as a creature great and small became Lord of the Jungle. So listen well and hear the call, and long love to those that keep the jungle law. These are animals. These are animals. Animals are our friends. Animals are our friend. What friend? I'm your friend, or I doubt the is your best friend. Tongue depressor, also friend. Birds are beautiful. Birds are beautiful. Dr. Bowman, please. Okay, I am trying to examine him. Alright, what is this, Baloo? In English? Bear. Good. I bet you can't tell me what this is, but you're, uh huh? Panther. Very good. And who do you think this is? That's me. You? <laughs> you are Shere Khan. The whole other man says I'm a half tiger. You are a half tiger. He said that when I see Shere Khan and show no fear, then I'll be a whole tiger. Where do you see this holy man, Mowgli? In my dreams. Shere Khan, he's returning. Sure. A tiger? Shere Khan, king of tigers. He's angry because of these men with their guns have gunned to his children killed more than they can eat. What does a tiger care? A few animals here or there. Would you allow someone to break into your house and steal your food? 
These three broke the jungle wall. Jung Shakan knows it. But best we were. You saved my life, Mowgli. Yes, Tartar. Now I need you to save the life of another. Damned elephant, pull yourself together. Go to the jungle boy. I got what I came for. I don't need you. Rogans, you bloody shot me. Oops. <laughs> Alright, y'all. I think that's my hip. That's it from our 50 minutes in. I think I'm going to stop here. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of The Jungle Book, the 1994 film. And if you've seen it, let me know what you think of it. You know, yeah, my rating for this movie is. Give it a rating. It, well, four to five stars probably. But my rating for this film is four to five stars because I mean, some of the CGI didn't hold up very well. You know, Kai, that's my big issue. And I think Shere Khan could have been in the film a little more. I think they could have had at least one scene where he tries to attack Mowgli or something. I think they should have had something like that. I see what they were going for, but, you know, at least... You know, have Sean Khan a little more because he is an important villain, you know. You know, he's Sean Khan is definitely one of the best Disney villains out there. You gotta have him. But anyway, you know, the movie, I still think it's a great movie. It's a movie I grew up with. So four to five stars will always be nostalgic for me. I think it's a fun movie. You know, I really enjoy the theme too, I forgot to mention. Da, 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 da. Love things pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's just a really good movie. But the Jungle Book 1994 version. If you're fans of me, please let me know if it's on DVD. <laughs> I don't even know if it is. I've only known it's on VHS, but Jungle Book 1994 film, very good movie, guys. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. If you have VHS, a VHS player, then go to a Goodwill around you somewhere and see if you can find it. Should be cheap. I did last time I watched it on VHS, though it didn't work. So I have to find out the movies on DVD. Because I really would like to get out. Really, it is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's one of those movies I grew up on. So. And before I end this video, maybe I can show you guys um, some new movies I got. Well, some movies my sister uh, gave me because she didn't want anymore. And those some are Disney movies I'm going to review. But anyway, I'm going to do that real quick. Show you some movies I got. Well, I didn't get, but anyway. I did buy this movie. I haven't watched it yet. I know people hate it, but it's the Flintstones. You know, yappa dappa doo. Yep, the Flintstones. Yep. This is the 1994 film, which I know a lot of people hate, but I've always liked this movie. I'm thinking of reviewing it for you know part of the movies I grew up with. You know, which I want to be movies for fun, so I might be reviewing this movie sometime soon. The Flintstones. The 1994 version would, yeah, pretty good movie. I like it. Uh, this uh, and these are some Disney, well, Pixar films. Well, DreamWorks. I mean, like this is a Pixar film, which I know a lot of people don't care for. I did myself, but I want to really see it again and maybe review this one. And that is Cars. Yeah, I definitely want to check it out again. I know they're coming out with a third movie. Seen a little bit of two. You know, I rewatch it. And then Chicken Little, which I like Chicken Little, it's a fun movie. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. And then a movie I also grew up with, this is supposed to be, used to be my brother's, they give it to my sister and then they give it to me. And that's a movie called Spirit. And then O 
Over the Edge, which is a really good movie. I, yeah, I've always liked Over the Edge. I don't think it's a bad movie. I know you say it's a kids' movie. Well, Disney Pixar animated films have been around for a long time, and this is DreamWorks too, because it says up top here from the creators of Shrek. So yeah, and Over the Edge is a really good movie. I just hope they all work. But again, y'all, that's some new movies I got. Well, just one new movie and stuff I got from my sister. She let me have. And anyway, guys, I um, hope you enjoyed my review of The Jungle Book, the 1994 film. Check it out if you've never seen it. Definitely, I definitely I highly recommend it. Please, you know, check it out. If you grew up with the movie, let me know what you think. But do you hate it? Do you not like it? In your opinion, has it aged well? Does it, does it hold up anymore? Do you like the movie anymore? Uh, what is your favorite version of The Jungle Book film? Is it the 1967 version? This one, the 2016 one, or the... The 1998 film uh, Mowgli Story, or any other Jungle Book films, the 1940, the 1942 film, or just one little movie they had, but whatever you know, it doesn't matter. But anyway, guys, my rank for the film was four to five stars. Great movie, love Jungle Book, and I give it two thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Next, I'm going to be reviewing. Well, probably first film I'm going to be reviewing of 2016. I still have a lot of 2015 reviews, but anyway, I'm going to do it anyway because it's my channel, so. I'm going to be reviewing the Jungle Book, the 2016 film, next. So I'll be looking forward to that. I'm going to try to do that today. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. And remember, long life to those who keep the jungle wall. Bye-bye.